forgotten about, and that's a crash. I first want to start off by asking if anyone knows who this is. No? Okay. That's what I expected. This is Fabian Cousteau. He's the grandson of the famous oceanographer Jacques Cousteau. And I had the opportunity to hear him speak uh, last summer at Rutgers University. And uh, he was just talking about all of his ocean explorations and his research with sharks and things like that. But he mentioned a statistic that really struck a chord with me. And he said that Americans on average throw out nine one-time use items of garbage every single day. And I remember hearing that and thinking, that sounds like way too high. I definitely don't do that. But I started noticing as I went through my days the things I was throwing out that would be considered one-time use items, which I'll talk about a little bit later. Um, so that resonated with me, and that's the reason I really want to talk to you about this today, to see if there are things we can do in our everyday lives to uh, minimize the garbage that we're throwing out. So I want to talk to you about the trash problem overall, how big it is, why this matters, why it's important, and why we should care about it. And then what you can do in your day-to-day -day lives to reduce your own garbage. So I mentioned the statistic that Fabian cited about the nine one-time use items per day. And uh, the Environmental Protection Agency also cites how many pounds of garbage we're producing every day because we're throwing out more than one-time use items. So if you look at how much each American is throwing out per day, if you look at one pound, you would think that's a lot. But it's more than that, 2.7 pounds of garbage per day. But that was back in 1960. It's higher today, so what is it? It's more than three, and it's more than four pounds. 4.6 pounds of garbage we're throwing out every single day. So if you look at a 140 pound person, it takes them a month to throw out their weight in garbage. So you throw out 12 of yourselves every single year. If you look at America as a whole in a year, um, look at the Lincoln Financial Field over in Philadelphia. Take that field from end zone to end zone and then dig down 100 miles. That's how much garbage America is throwing out every single year. So when I heard that stat, it was really hard for me to visualize 100 miles. So take the Empire State Building. How many of you, or sorry, not how many of you, um, how many Empire State Buildings do you all think it takes to get to 100 miles? Any guesses? 50. 200. <laughs> You're all uh, pretty low. 422 Empire State Buildings to get to 100 miles. So think of those all stacked on top of each other, the size of the Lincoln Financial Field. So what are we throwing out? We're throwing out 71.6 million tons of paper every year. 43,000 tons of food every day, and 2.5 million plastic bottles every hour. Where does it all go? It's hopefully going to the landfills. That's where we are hope, wanting it to go, because almost we want it to go to recycling. A lot of it's ending up in the oceans, and that's kind of what I want to talk to you about in the next section. So why does this matter? Why should you care about this topic? In my research, I found that there is this patch in the uh, Pacific Ocean called the Great Pacific Garbage Patch. And it's an area of garbage just floating out there because of the currents. All the oceans have it, but this happens to be the largest one that they know of. And if you look, scientists will talk about how this patch is the size of Texas. So that something the size of Texas just floating in the middle of the ocean. Other scientists will say it's the size of Canada. Either way, it's huge. If it's the size of Canada, it's enormous. So that's a lot of garbage floating out there. Why is this important? The oceans house 95% of our world's life and encompass 99% of our world's biodiversity, total biodiversity. So this garbage isn't out there alone. So take a look at these pictures of some of the negative repercussions of all this. So obviously it's affecting a lot of animals. It's really sad. I was getting really sad while I was doing this part of the research and I, I kept the pictures tame and they were the worst ones. But um, it, this is a huge issue. It's killing one million apex predators every single year. And even if you don't care about the wildlife itself, um, 
it's affecting us too. Fabian Cousteau, said, uh, Fabian Cousteau said, the oceans are quite literally the circulatory system of life, and as such, whatever happens in the ocean happens to us. So you think about the fish you eat, if they're swimming around with those pollutants or consuming it, then we eat those fish, we might be getting sick either that day or down the road. So next, what can you do? So we probably all remember from grade school when we were taught reduce, reuse, recycle. I want to talk to you about something I'm calling replace. I'm not sure if that's a term anyone else is using, but I think it's kind of a combination of reduce and reuse. So I'm going to go through a bunch of examples of what you should stop using <coughs> and what you should start using instead. So the first one are the paper or styrofoam cups that we use. And I have an example of a reusable cup. Um, I bought this one actually right after I saw Fabian Cousteau, the bookstore, or not the bookstore, the Starbucks over um, on campus here was selling them for a dollar. They give you 10 cents off every time you use it. And I probably used it 50 times. So I think that's a great idea. Uh, plastic bags. Uh, use cloth ones instead, like this one. Uh, instead of plastic bottles, you can use reusable bottles and you can have a Brita filter at home. This one actually has a Brita filter in it, so you can use tap water and um, taste good afterwards. Um, instead of washing your hands and using a paper towel or napkin, use a dish towel instead, or use dish towels to do more cleaning or rags and things like that. Instead of wrapping uh, your leftover food in plastic wrap or tin foil, use Tupperware. Or use a pot or pan lid on top of a plate. Um, plastic utensils, if you're ordering out and uh, or getting delivery or something, a lot of places always give too many napkins, too many plastic utensils, ketchup, things like that. If you have those things already, try to encourage businesses to not give you that stuff that you don't need. Uh, go electronic, get your statements uh, that way instead of in the mail. And then this one I almost left out, but I think it's actually a, an important one to bring up. So as I was going through the research, um, I was asking all my friends and family about uh, what they would do. And my brother brought up this idea of using safety razors instead of disposable razors. And uh, it's basically you just replace the little blade and that's the only thing that you throw out and you keep the handle. And I was like, oh, that's a great idea. And, uh, you know, do you use that? He's like, no. <laughs> Are you kidding me? <laughs> and, and he was like, well, you know, I just never got around to getting it. But because we had talked about it, and I kind of was like, that's ridiculous. Why don't you just do it? He actually ordered it online yesterday, and it's arriving tomorrow. And so now that's something he's going to be doing. So um, I just, I bring that up because I want this to be something that, you don't just talk about doing or you don't just want to do. Make it something you actually go out and do and, and put in the initiative to do it. So quick recap, we talked about how big this trash problem is, why it really matters, and what you can do about it. And I want to close off with talking about why I call this presentation our trash. And you know, when we go through our days, we throw out trash, the trash can picks it up, takes it away and we never think about it again. But it reminded me of this thing called the tragedy of the commons, which is an economics theory about how when we all own one thing, or none of us own it, but we're all using it, no one takes responsibility for it. And so, same thing with the oceans, no one's cleaning it up. And that's a lot like with all this trash, and it, it goes away, and we hope that the company is, is disposing of it properly, but we don't know, and we could do things before it even gets to that point to try to reduce the amount that we are potentially putting into the environment. I'll leave off with one more quote from Fabian Cousteau. The ocean belongs to all of us, but there's no single entity or no single nation that's there to protect it. We need to be able to network and really all care about it and all protect the oceans. <coughs> Thank you. Steve. Good job, Megan. Um, my question is, in your opinion, you know, why do you think Americans throw out so much trash? Just people realize it's so simple, maybe we're lazy. Um, so I just want to get your feedback on what you thought about that. Yeah, I, I think it's become part of our culture. We're so busy, we're always on the go. I'm guilty of a lot of this stuff, too. Like, when I'm working from home uh, on some days, I'm really good about not throwing out anything. 
and I go on a business trip and I'm using water bottles because I don't feel like bringing my thermos or I don't have it with me and forgot it. Um, we're just so used to immediate satisfaction, I guess, and or gratification, and we're not thinking about what happens to it. <laughs>